So one of the best one-liners of all of my patients of all time, and <laughs> I work with a lot of smart people, so we've got some good humor that happens in treatment. But anyway, it happened when we decided to remove Asperger's from the diagnostic criteria and move towards autism spectrum disorder. And my client, my patient got real quiet and he th said, I guess... I'm going to have to decide if I have autism or if I'm just an asshole. And I don't necessarily agree with his assessment that people who are neurodiverse are assholes, but that was how he was experiencing himself. And he did have to make that decision. And we talked through that a lot and he decided he was on the spectrum. And that created a different approach to life for him. Some things it relieved, some things it uh, he had to face some issues within himself and make accommodations, which is kind of hard sometimes. So anyway, join me inside as we kind of unpack, kind of, because it's a huge topic. So we're just going to do a piece. Neurodiversity. What is it? What the heck is it? It's a really popular word right now. And sometimes... Um, well, I think the meaning is changing, and so let's talk about it inside. Welcome back to the CPTSD podcast, and frankly, I have no idea what season or episode this is, so I'm going to move forward and let that just be real with you all. I didn't write it down, so it's not in my brains. Neurodiversity is a word that is coming up a lot. And as you're probably listening to a podcast or watching me on YouTube right now, um, that means you're somewhat exposed to social media. And so I, I'm guessing it's come across your feed that there might be some neurodiversity in you so or in someone you love if you're listening on behalf of somebody. So today what we're going to talk about is the basic definitions of those words and I'm talking real high level because you can go research those and learn a little bit more um, about yourself through that process but also there's a lot of different arguments about what is neurodiversity, what is neurotypicality and how do we define that in fact, I think we're at a turning point where we're going to start to see things really, really differently. And that is because we're starting to do better research, meaning more inclusive. So more populations than um, white male in particular, white male identified. Um, and also because we've got more contact with each other. And so those of us who are neurodiverse are able to listen to the experiences of other people and resonate with that and learn more about ourselves. So one of the big questions that's coming up right now, there are two that are really coming through my feet a lot. So note to self, one is what is neurodiversity and what is neurotypicality and are we at war? Can we ever be together? <laughs> because I think people feel very misunderstood who experience neurodiversity and we should feel misunderstood um, because we are misunderstood. And that's part two, which is let's learn more about what is being neurodiverse. So neurodiverse is starting to take on this meaning that you have some type of either um, disorder or disability. So let's just be clear that like, that's one of the things we're talking about is that there is something different. And it is currently considered a disorder or a disability. For example, CPTSD is on the neurodiverse uh, gamut. And it is considered a disorder. Um, and ADHD autism are also considered uh, not necessarily disordered, but disabilities. And so that is a huge thing to talk about. So we're not going to unpack all of autism today. That is a big deal. And, mo and I need more people to talk with me about it because I think that I am more skilled than average in my industry, but I don't think that I'm an expert. And that's part of what we're learning. And I'm going to hold up a book right now for those of you that are just listening. It is called Unmasking Autism by Devin Price. And it's made some waves. Congratulations, Devin. It's made some waves. And it is thoughtful and well laid out and has plans for the future. And so if you're considering whether you are um, 
perhaps neurodiverse meaning on the spectrum or ADHD, which I am pretty certain we're going to find out is just a conglomeration of the a same thing or maybe has a variation in genetics. Anyway, I'm already rabbit trailing because there's so much exciting stuff to talk about. If you are considering whether you might be in this group of people we're talking about who have neurodiversity from the average, then this might be a great way for you to start processing some of those questions and, and look at it from a different lens. And I think that that is really where the neurodiverse study and research pool is going to improve right now is that we're starting to look at it through a different lens, an all-encompassing lens. Some of it is hormonal right? We're starting to have a little bit of that input. Some of it is also gestational, what's happening in utero, and what kind of hormones and other chemicals are you exposed to in utero, and then just genetic predisposition, and how does that begin? And so there's a lot of conversation going on, and uh, if, you know, if you need a new hyper-focus, this might be the thing to make it. So what we're going to talk about today is for CPTSD, what do you need to know to understand neurodiversity from that perspective? All right. So the first thing you need to know is that, yep, if you have CPTSD, you would be considered atypical of the average population. And I really encourage you to stop (laughs) using the word normal. I hear that all the time. Um, It's not normal. There's an average, okay? neurodiversity is every human on the planet. Every one of us is slightly different for a lot of different reasons. And so rather than making this about us and them, let's figure out how we can understand the collective together because neurotypicality comes with a lot of benefits. So does neurodiversity. So from a CPTSD lens, you have potential neurodiversity because the trauma or the distress that your system was in during your upbringing or whatever ordeal you experienced has redefined how your nervous system works from the typical way a nervous system would develop. That's why, for example, a lot of us have hypervigilance, right? And here's an example of hypervigilance, which my Nana had and my dad has, and it's in me. Um, I love doing palm readings and psychic readings. That's just fun for me. So one time Brent and I were in India and I feel like I just talked about this somewhere. So hopefully it wasn't here. Anyway, we're going to do the story again. We were in India and we stepped off the elevator and there's this guy um, sitting in the lobby wanting to do palm reading. So I totally dove in and ate that right up. It was right in front of me. How could I not? Right. Uh, Do you hear some ADHD there? Anyway, so he's looking at my palms and he gets like this furrowed brow, he's thinking, right? And then he looks at me and says, I think that you're somebody who goes (gasps) and put his hands up in the air, like in shock or, or horror or fear. And he nailed it. That is the best reading I've had in a really long time. That is neurodiverse. That is neuroatypical, right? Because I've done that my whole life, that jumping startled reflex, okay? So there's that way of looking at it, that because we have endured distress, our nervous system wasn't able to develop on average. So if that makes you sad, then I grieve with you. Also, it'll be okay, because you can learn to accommodate yourself and your needs. And you can also learn, and here's the relationship part of CPTSD, that you're worth accommodation and that it is okay and safe for you to accommodate yourself. And there's a little bit of a learning curve to that, right? You're standing up on new wobbly legs, so get yourself some support. And we've talked throughout the CPTSD podcast about different support networks. And get ready because accommodation is appropriate for you regardless of why or how you experience neurodiversity. And also, it does not matter your level of need. All needs deserve accommodation and it's appropriate to accommodate all needs. All right, just like breathe that in for a minute. 
So when you have this nervous system that will hijack you and put a, you know, a shock through you literally, and then, you know, the chemicals start with the release of all of those hormones that add, you know, trauma and age to our bodies. And I'm now referencing the ACEs. Okay. CPTSD is enough for you to accommodate your needs for however long they require accommodation. I just felt myself circle that a couple times, so I'm really just wanting to pause with that for a minute. And if you're not sure that you're worth accommodating, take a breath right now and just notice what you're thinking and experiencing. What's going on for you? However you figure that out is the best way. You know what you're doing. And if you're screaming, no, I don't know what I'm doing at the podcast or <laughs> your screen right now, I understand that it doesn't feel like that. I really do. So your neurodiversity really deserves accommodation and a couple of ways to think about that. And we're just going to talk about a couple today and then I'm going to move on to another thing to be aware of. One is if you need padding around your day because transitions are hard for you, Okay. And that's something we don't like for me. I never really thought about transitions being hard for me in those words. And those are DSM clinical type words, right? But when things don't go as expected, I get really frustrated and start thinking that I should have planned better. Even though I completely understand that life isn't, you know, predictable and that I have zero control over it, but those things still mix up and mash up together. So if you need padding around different in integrating parts of your day, give that to yourself. Also, maybe a snack on hand. Because a lot of us with neurodiverse brains tend to ignore our internal signals that we need something. Also from neglect. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. So like put a kind bar in your car or your bag or your pocket or wherever you're going to be able to get to it and give yourself 10 extra minutes to do changes. That's all we're talking about. Okay, we're going to move on to another way that you might have some neurodiversity and that could be the genetic component of ADHD slash autism slash highly sensitive person, which is a raging debate <laughs> right now. A lot of people are thinking those of us who have identified as highly sensitive people um, are the female or the feminine um, or the estrogenic expression of autism. And I, I don't know that that's wrong. I'm available and open for us to prove that. And it's starting to look that way through research. So go ahead and look that up. Um, estrogenic and androgenic autism, and then also ADHD and how we're starting to notice. I mean, we've always had known that there's a big overlap in diagnoses, meaning you people who have ADHD have a really highly likelihood of autism and vice versa right? Also, it's very genetic. So if any of these things sound like a parent or a sibling that you have, then I would start looking in my parents and grandparents to see if you can identify some of these behaviors. Now, recognize that a lot of us are very high masking, and that's where this book, Unmasking Autism, comes in. And what high masking means is, is that we have figured out, we have a fantastic pattern recognition excuse me. So we have figured out um, what people expect and we know how to play a game. And some of us are really good at that and some of us get exhausted by it. And and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then perhaps you're um, more in the neurotypical camp. But sometimes being around people is hard. And that's not always because you've been harmed in the past. Sometimes it's because our nervous systems just don't want it. It's too much stimulation, or in the case of ADHD, sometimes under stimulation, right? And then we have an overlap of those. So what a push-pull that is to have the um, hyper-focus for both and the frontal um, executive function going offline for a lot of different things. It's overwhelming to live life if you have any type of phenotype or expression of bio, not biodiversity, of course, we have that, of neurodiversity. So think about how hard life has been for you. And 
And for some of us, it's been charmed, but also difficult. For example, for me, I'm a highly sensitive person. I can hear stuff charging my house and smell things that other people don't. And that's what we mean by sensitive, right? It, you actually have a heightened sense. One time I had a car accident and I had some hearing tests and the ear doctor told me I could afford to lose some hearing because my hearing was really sensitive, but also I had a really big range. And so that's what we're talking about. Also, you know, the traditional, do the tags on your clothes bother you? Now, if you're really literal, you'd say no, and then wouldn't get a diagnosis. But the no would be with a caveat because you have an entire system on how to avoid feeling distressed from your tags. So if any of this resonates with you, I highly encourage you to enter the stream of this conversation because it does take some processing. If neither of these things are true for somebody, another way that we can start to appear as if we have neurodiversity, and I would say we do, from injury, either from CPTSD type of injury or from literal brain trauma. Now, I've been in multiple car accidents. I have fallen off of things. I um, have been harmed by people who are my caregivers. So when you think about injury to your brain, we're really... Anytime you've passed out, lost consciousness, or even maybe saw stars or felt really dizzy, brain trauma can really mimic neurodiversity because parts of your brain have been damaged. And so if you have any head trauma, I really encourage you to make sure that your therapist knows that and also any medical providers because it absolutely impacts the way you experience everything. So this, this has been a really big conversation. And so let's just take a breath and like find whatever's tense and relax it. For me, it was my shoulders. There's a lot to unpack here. And if you're afraid that you might have autism, that is a reasonable thing to be a fear, a feared of, afraid of, because there's a lot of stigma around what we're talking about right now. There's a lot of stigma that comes with ADHD and autism in particular. And I'm really hoping that that's going to change as we learn more about what it actually is, not what we've thought it was all these years. There's hope. There's real hope. And if you're somebody like me who has, I, I would not right now screen for either autism or ADHD. And yet I know I have ADHD. I'm really high masking, right? I'm really high masking. And it took me a long time to figure that out. And so I've had to figure out when and where will I unmask and what does that look like? It looks like a lot more buffer around my life and making sure that I really trust the people that are part of my life. And I would encourage you to consider those two things for yourself too. So I'm kind of ending on a serious note. I'm still digesting this book and um, I'll keep you updated as things grow and change. If you're interested in hearing more about this type of, of concept and how it might impact you, what it might look like, could you please go ahead and put like a note down below so that I see that now you don't want to um, go on about things that aren't appealing. But neurodiversity and CPTSD also have overlap because people who are neurodiverse tend to be traumatized more both because they're sensitive to it and it makes a deeper impression for real. That's a real thing that happens in our body, a deeper impression. But also we're more vulnerable to abuse in some situations. So if this resonates with you, let me know. Please give me a like, a follow. And um, I want to also let you know if you are beginning to think about therapy, please check out the CPTSD toolbox. It is a pretty comprehensive guide to what different kinds of therapy are available for CPTSD that actually work. So check that out and I'll see you soon.